Instead of just talking about our customer examples, we thought that we would actually provide you uh, with uh, a demonstration here on stage. And so thinking about something that might be relevant, I'm actually a native San Franciscan, uh, and so I've lived with earthquakes all my life. You're sitting in California in a place that is one of the seismically most active areas in the Pacific, and we managed to put out of our mind the fact that we're sitting in earthquake territory. So the question is, how can we use sensors and the data that we're collecting through these very powerful networks in order to understand what's going on when an earthquake hits and how to react and recover more quickly. So to talk about that, and I'm going to invite my colleague, Marina Donovan, up onto the stage, who's our vice president in charge of global marketing, to help us demonstrate and talk about how we actually apply this technology in a situation relating to an earthquake. Please join me, Marina. Good morning. This morning, we're going to show how different data streams from sensors connected to ITRON's network can help cities and utilities better plan, respond, and mitigate impact. We, as Philip mentioned, we're going to simulate an earthquake. And uh, we're going to start it with the meter over there. And Philip, can you tell us a little bit about the Sure. Meter? Actually, our meters have always contained an accelerometer, which was put in there in order to detect tampering in case somebody actually moved one of our meters. The advantage of developing on an open technology platform is we're able to make that accelerometer available to our partners. And they've become interested in using that as a way of detecting ground motion. Okay, behind me you see a map of Santa Clara. This is, uh, has been created in a synthetic intelligence environment, and it was created by our partner, Run With It Synthetics. Run With It Synthetics was founded by a woman and is led by a woman. RWI, for short, uses artificial intelligence to consider, design, and experience the future including unpredictable events. On the map, just so, because this demo is going to go fast, so I just want to get everybody grounded on where things are. You're going to see there's the convention center there, Levi's, note the pedestrian trail, and Mission College. And they've actually built out the city with 42,000 people, and we're going, to, we're going to talk about those people. This person up here is modeling a synthetic person. You'll see it, it goes from male to female. And you'll see here all of the different applications that we're going to be talking about um, throughout the demo. And then here we'll talk about the results. So how many people were evacuated safely, really key. We're going to simulate a 6.7 magnitude earthquake, which, by the way, was the uh, same size as Northridge. And a lot of terrible things happened um, you know, in trying to restore electricity. It, spar it sparked and created arcs. And, then it started fires, over 400 fires. So it's also a nine on the Mercalli scale, so you'll see a nine on the screen. And we're going to activate all of our applications. And at the end of the demo, we'll show the results of how many people safely evacuated. So in thinking about this earthquake, Philip, I just couldn't help but flash back uh, to 1989, the Loma Prieta earthquake. Oh, my gosh. Look at your audience. Half the people here weren't even born then. But OK, let's, let's think about that one. OK, true, true. That's true. However, um, now people can get a sense of what it was like. And better it's 2000, you know, 2019, and there's technology available out there to mitigate risk and save lives. And the meters and the sensors that we're also showing in these demos, these are out in the field today. They're real. And also, you need to think of the meter. The meter can be the sensor as well. It's a whole new world. So are you ready, Philip? I, yes, I am. OK, go ahead and shake the meter. OK, here we go. Everybody OK? <laughs> All right. OK, we now are seeing the residential neighborhood with the electric meters in yellow. You'll see a white square zooming around. That's checking and seeing how our synthetic people are doing and how they're feeling and reacting to the earthquake. 
Next, we see that the electric meters are sending a signal to the gas shutoff valves, and you can see those in pink. The gas is being shut off. Soon, you're going to see purple and red little diagrams. Here they come. And this is showing pole tilt. He, Philip talked about your pole is tilting, right? Your power lines are down, and that is what it's showing. We can see that there's a concentration near that pedestrian trail of power lines down and poles down. This is very real. These poles are going over 101, right? With, I mean, it's, it's scary stuff. So what happens often in earthquakes, gas lines can break. And soon, our methane sensors are going to begin to detect leaks. Let's see how we do here. Uh, in green, you see the, all of the different methane leaks that have been detected. And it'll be up to 240, uh-oh, seeing a concentration right at Mission College. So when there's gas leaks, what happens? There's fire. The blue is indicating our air quality sensors, and they're detecting smoke and fire, and a lot of this will start taking place in, during in Mission College. Our person is going to be looking very stressed. You see it go from green to yellow. And now we're zooming in. Here we are at the convention center. And in the, all these faint green dots, these are people. And we're all being given evacuation notices telling us, avoid Mission College. Avoid that pedestrian trail. Uh, Philip, did you get your yes, alert? Yes, I actually, I, I did get my alert. Yes. Excellent. But flashback to 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake. I was at work, get in the car, gridlock. No one's going anywhere. And guess what? What was scary is a lot, that back then there weren't as many people here. So things like this are really important. It can really mitigate a lot of issues. So soon we're going to see the, how the whole thing kind of wraps up. But I will tell you that thanks in part to the self-healing nature of our Weissun-based network, even if part of the network is down, the signal can be rerouted to other access points so cities and utilities can have that visibility to see where they need to focus and respond first. Ah, now it's the broader view of of the area. It's been 15 minutes since the earthquake, and people have started to get to safe spaces. We can see that 87% of the people in this area have been evacuated. Run with its technology is key in helping prepare for all kinds of disasters. They work with organizations today and do simulations for tens of millions of people. And in today's world, as Philip mentioned, it's more important than ever that we're prepared. Just look at the fires uh, in Paradise, California, um, the last few months. I mean, they had a, a very sound evacuation plan. Yet, according to a USA Today survey, only 22% of California communities have a robust, publicly available evacuation plan. The good news is, with tools like these, cities and utilities can run and model these different scenarios and design and trial it, and hopefully be prepared for the unpredictable, mitigate that risk, and ultimately save lives. So that concludes our quick demo and gives you a small glimpse of the role that sensors and this great technology from Run With It can provide, and um, it all helps to improve disaster response.